Hello and welcome to this lecture where I'm going to look at what server access logging is. In a nutshell, when server access logging is enabled on a bucket, it captures details of requests that are made to that bucket and its objects. Logging is important when it comes to security, root cause analysis following incidents, and it can also be required to conform to specific audit and governance certifications. Server access logging, however, is not guaranteed and is conducted on a best effort basis by S3. The logs themselves are collated and sent every few hours or potentially sooner, and there is no hard and fast rule that indicates that every request will be captured and that you will receive a log for a specific request within a set time frame. Enabling access logging on your buckets is a very simple process using the S3 management console. Firstly, select your bucket and from the properties tab, you will see the service access logging tile. By default, the setting is disabled, as you can see, and to enable it, simply select the tile and you'll be presented with the following screen. Select Enable Logging, and this gives you two options to complete the configuration. Firstly, you need to select a target bucket, and this target bucket will be used to store any logs created by enabling server access logging on your source bucket, which must be in the same region. For management and organization, you can additionally add a target prefix that S3 will add to the logs from your source bucket. When you have selected your target bucket and added an optional prefix, click Save. Additionally, you can also enable logging on your bucket during its creation. Again, you must select a target bucket and an optional prefix. To allow S3 to write access logs to a target bucket, it will, of course, require specific permissions. And these permissions will require write access for a group known as the log delivery group, which is a predefined Amazon S3 group used to deliver log files to your target buckets. If the configuration of your access login is configured using the management console, then the enablement of logging automatically adds the log delivery group to the ACL, the access control list, of the target bucket, allowing the relevant access. However, if you were to configure the access logging using the S3 API or AWS SDKs, then you would need to manually configure these permissions. More information on this process can be found here. Following the example above, if I look at the access control list under the permissions tab of the target bucket S3 deep dive logging, I can see that the log delivery group has both write and read access to the bucket. Before I continue, there are some points regarding the configuration of server access logging that you need to be aware of. Firstly, and as I've already mentioned, both the source and target buckets should be in the same region, and it's best practice that different buckets are used for each. Also, the permissions of the S3 access log group can only be assigned via access control lists and not through bucket policies. So when manually setting the permissions for this via an SDK, you must update the ACL. Finally, if you have encryption enabled on your target bucket, access logs will only be delivered if this is set to SSE S3, server-side encryption managed by S3, as encryption with KMS, the key management service, is not supported. When the logs start arriving in the target bucket, the names will be presented following a standard naming pattern. In this example of S3 access logs, I entered a target prefix of logs, and so all of the logs will start with that prefix. Following any prefix that has been set, the naming convention is as follows. This defines the year, followed by the month, followed by the day, then the time in hours, minutes and seconds, and finally a unique string to avoid duplication of log names. Let me now take a look at the contents of one of these log files to understand the information that they contain. This is an example of a single entry in one of the logs, which is separated by space delimited fields. Let me break this down into each section so you can see how it's constructed and what each element represents. Firstly, the bucket owner, and this represents the canonical user ID of the owner of the source bucket. The canonical user ID is used for cross account access via bucket policies. Bucket, this shows the name of the bucket related to the request. Time, this is a timestamp of the request in UTC. Remote IP address, this represents the internet address of the identity carrying out the request. The requester. For authenticated users, this field will show the IAM identity. For any unauthenticated users, a hyphen will be displayed instead. Request ID. A random string to identify each request. Operation. This will display the operation of the request that was carried out. Key. The key part of the request, URL encoded, or if the no key parameter is used, then a hyphen will be displayed as in this example. A hyphen in any field of the request indicates that the available data was not known or was not applicable for the request. 
request URI. This represents the request URI element of the HTTP request. HTTP status. This displays the HTTP status returned from the request as a numeric value. Error code. If an error was experienced, then S3 will return the error code received. Bytes sent, the number of bytes sent as a response. Object size, which is the size of the object in question in the request. Total time, measured in milliseconds. It represents how long the request took from receiving the request to the last byte of sending a response. Turnaround time, this shows how long it took S3 to process the request. Referrer, this value is taken from the HTTP referrer header However, in this case, there was none present, and so a hyphen is represented as the value. User agent. This shows the value taken from the HTTP user agent header. Version ID. If present, this will show the version ID of the request. Host ID. The XAMZ ID 2, or Amazon S3 Extended Request ID. The XAMZ ID 2 header is a token that is used together with the XAMZ Request ID header to help AWS troubleshoot problems. Signature version, this will show which signature version was used to authenticate the request. Cypher suite, if SSL was used, it would show which Cypher suite was used. If HTTP was used, then a hyphen would be shown instead. Authentication type, this shows the type of authentication used for the request. Host header, represents the endpoints used to connect to Amazon S3 in the request. And finally, the TLS version, which shows the version of TLS that was used by the client.